hello everyone welcome back in this basically lecture basically i am going to cover the top interview questions that basically asked in the interviews i am going to be basically cover the top 10 interview question that mainly it has been asked into the question interview and i have seen this question basically in our interview also so so we don't need to worry about that let's start it first question is difference between breakout queue and delta whatever the 10 interview question i have taken here these all things are are covered into my all lecture series you have gone through the all lecture videos then all 10 question will be clear to you just you need to look on that video so difference between day letter queue and breakout queue let me say, simply told you day letter queue is a is a also a failure queue and breakout queue is a also a failure queue in case of something failure happen something uh, thing unhandled exception happen the message will go to day letter queue and breakout queue difference between difference is only that day letter queue is particularly for a a queue manager where breakout queue is particularly for a queue in case of some exception hangly with a particular queue and if you have defined a backout queue then message will be go to backout queue but if you have not defined any backout queue then message will directly go to a dead letter queue backout can be backout queue can be a many while dead letter queue can be a only one for a particular queue manager now coming to second question list the name of queue which is basically a local queue this is a very popular question they are basically asking the name the local queue basically you know local queue is a one of the local queue but if you see here let me go to the mq explorer if you see here if you create a queue this is a basically a local queue and you basically create a local queue but they ask question you list the name of queue list the name of queue which is a local queue then if you know transmission queue is also a local queue only difference is that usage is transmission breakout queue is also a local queue trans dead letter queue is also a local queue okay so these are the basically queue which is also a local queue but usage is different different breakout queue you use in the storage uh, if you, in case of we are using a, in a storage let me give you show you in case if you are you if you are de defining here then it is a breakout queue if you are defining in the properties of the queue, it is a delta queue. If you are making the usage as a transmission, then it is a usage transmission and transmission queue. So these all three queues are already a local queue. So this is the answer of this question. Now, difference between persistent message and non-persistent message. This is a very uh, deep question understood uh, thing video I have made already. If you are talking about a persistent and non-persistent message, if the persistent then what will happen in case of failure happen network failure happen q major failure happen and might be the case happen the q major need to be restart then persistent message will remain same into the queue message will not going to be lost while non persistent message will be lost in case of uh, failure happen okay this is a basic difference between the persistent and non persistent message now list the name of object of the wave whisper mq wave whisper mq ka, uh, uh, we have to need to list the objects of the wave whisper mq i think i have already explained you this thing if you are talking about the wave objects of wave whisper wave whisper mq then basically if you are talking queue major queues topic subscription channel listener services process name list which all are the basically object of wave whisper mq okay now come to the next question now difference between the server mq server and mq client i have very deep video on this let me give a brief of this you know i am using the mq explorer and i have lots of queue manager here this is basically called a mq server this is basically called a mq server and this is called a server end okay this is called a mq server and called a server end okay and the client uses the client uses that is called 
MQ client. So only difference is that MQ server is basically a web aspire MQ Q manager who has a basically a Q manager and channel usage as a server connection. But MQ client, if you let me go through the definition, is a basically a component of IBM MQ product. It is this is also a the MQ client, this is also a product of IBM MQ that is installed with no Q manager runs. Here basically difference between them is in the MQ server basically Q managers runs basically in the MQ client there is a no Q manager runs. There is a major difference in MQ server there is no Q manager runs but in MQ client the MQ server Q managers runs but in MQ client there is a no Q manager runs. Use of an MQ uh, IBM MQI client in application running on the system as a client can connect the Q manager and running another system. This is basically this is basically used to connect the, the MQ server or you can set it MQ WSPare MQ Q managers. Then we, you can say we can say that like that. WebSphere MQ Q manager basically have a Q manager where MQ client do not have a Q manager. M MQ client have a channel knowledge came client collection or with the help of client connection they used to connect with the help of web aspire MQ Q manager or your MQ server. Now let's come to next question. You of channel and different type of channels. Now oh, spelling a different uh, mistake. Uh, let's ignore it. Use of channel and different type of channel. The channel is basically used to send a message from the one QMIA to other QMIA from we consider it a MQ server to the client and if from one place to other place we need to send message then we use the channels. Different type of channels are basically sender channel uh, used to send a message, receiver channel to receive message, similarly server channel is used to send message, request channel to receive message. Similarly, is the server connection channel used at the server end to send the message uh, base, to connect the client and client connection channel is used to connect the server. Similarly, we have the MQ cluster receiver channel and MQ clusters uh, uh, cluster sender channel and cluster receiver channel. Cluster sender channel is to send the information and cluster receiver channel to receive the information. These are basically types of channel. Now, different between the full repo and partial repo, I have very deep video on this. Let me give a brief of this. <coughs> full repo and partial repo basically comes into the into a when we are learning about the uh, when we are learning about the uh, MQ cluster. So partial repo and full repo are are comes into picture when we are learning about the uh, MQ cluster. Partial repository basically takes play uh, takes part into the transmission message between the queue managers, while the full repo uh, uh, while the full repo basically uh, participate into the uh, uh, storing the information what is happening between the partial repository. The full partial repo help us to send message and and help in the load balancing. While the full repo used to, if anything may changes in partial repository, then that thing basically going to be stored into a full repo. This is a basic concept of the full repo. And if you want to deep understand, then go to my uh, MQ cluster, uh, basically uh, a theoretical video. Now, there are different, uh, different channel status, if you know. Uh, Take this is a question asked basically ki what are the status of channels? There is inactive state, running state, retrying state, and a stopped state. If channel is running, it is a running state. If it channel is in something like that, the, it is not connection is not making properly, then it is a called a retrying state. In case channel is in a stopped state, it is called a stopped state. Now, what do you mean by inactive state? Let's say example, if no application is connected to this channel, then channel is in disconnected state in that case we call it as a inactive state now let's me uh, show you basically let let's take a uh, this q manager if you go to channel currently if you see the channel are in inactive states okay 
you are also seeing this channel in negative states okay because nothing is connected now let me put some message here because here q i have deleted let me here if you see here not here it is showing in inactive state here these all cluster channel are swing into inactive state because because there currently there is no nothing application which sending information i have deleted this queue which is the source queue of the sending message now let's create the queue and see how it's working i am creating a queue to send message to this local queue once i create the queue and send the message and connection is made you will see now let me create the alias queue um not alias once i create now you will see that it will be in active state let me show you now it's done i have created the queue which is pointing to basically qm dot local and qm local are in the this now you will see the channel will be up state currently you can see it is in active state once i put the message it will go into the active state so let me put some message here put text message let me put the message once i or once they only get the message they are going to be in active state let's see the channel message now you can see it is running a state you can see it's running a state in it was in actively you will see here also same thing you will see here also same thing got a point this is basically a concept of inactive inactive so if any application is connected with the channel then if any application is connected with channel then channel will be in running state if if no one is connected then it will go into a disconnected state and it will go into an inactive state this is a basic difference between inactive and running now let's go to tenth question that is the circular logging and linear logging this thing i have uh, uh, taught in very earlier classes when you are creating a particular q manager let me show you when you are creating a particular key manager there is a options came let me give you a random name of the key manager if you see here circular logging and linear logging circular logging like that let me open notepad for you it will taking some more time open it not circular logging like that ki there is a three file will be made what first file second file 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 1 file 2 and file 3 only three file will be made and first log will be written here once this file will be full again log will be written here again this file will be full then again log will be written here then once this file will be full this will be automatically file will be clear and the again file log will be written here again once this file will be full this all be uh, automatically clear this will go into it then against this file will be full then log will be going to be written here so this will log will be written in the circular manner previous fi old file old file log will be automatically deleted and new file will be log will be added this happen in a circular manner but in case of talking about the linear logging what will happen log will be continuously written in the form of file file 4 file 5 and file 6 and file 7 in this form log will be written in continuously continuously log will be written in different different form files what will happen after that after that it will happen like that your disk space will going to be full and you need to do a manual housekeeping 
दिस इज बेसिकली डिमेरिट ऑफ द लिनियर लॉगिंग इफ यू डोंट इन डू ए हॉस कीपिंग देन योर डिक्स इज विल बी योर सिस्टम विल बी गोइंग टू बी करेक्ट नाउ दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द 10 इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन ऑफ द आईवीएम if you have uh, like i will give few few more question hope you have enjoyed the video and have a great time we will again meet with the next video or next topic thank you so much we will meet again thank you all